Why would a Tantra practitioner want to take our training? Well, I think what a Tantra professional would gain from a scar tissue remediation training is very simply how to feel scar tissue and what to do if it might come up. So, for instance, let's say someone is specializing in G-spot massage or yoni work. How would they know that they'd encountered scar tissue in the G-spot? It simply could be that they're not really getting much of a response that they're anticipating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the tissue there might feel more slick, more dense. Um, but that's something that we would teach is how to feel. There can sometimes even feel like there's a, an energetic plaque, but it's actually a scar tissue plaque yes. together there. Mm -hmm. And so we would teach them how to feel that, which could just really make the work more efficient and more direct mm -hmm. rather than um, abstracting it. It's like really getting con concrete about knowing what you're touching when you're touching it, just in general, in mm -hmm. terms of muscular skeletal anatomy. You mean like actually knowing the anatomy? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Learning the mm -hmm. anatomy and then learning what scar tissue feels like mm -hmm. and how that feels different from muscle or feels different from connective tissue or feels yes. different from bone. And just so having that kind of um, finesse in layering. And I think that would also provide a lot more options because what I've heard about a lot of um, Tantra sessions is they sort of follow a map, like like okay. a Thai massage does. There's yes. a trajectory, the way that it goes. Or it's almost a ritual, That's you know, right. in... Shiatsu, when I was teaching at a Shiatsu school, the students learned a kata. A kata was a sequence of strokes yeah. or a sequence of points that you would work to release the gallbladder, or to work with the small intestine, or to work with head and neck tension, or to do something on the feet. You know, you'd have these little forms that you would do. And what I've, um, not little forms, but they were short sequences, that's what uh -huh. I mean there, that these sequences can become encoded so that P the practitioner can learn a lot by just repeating the sequence, but it doesn't necessarily meet the needs of the person in the moment if a scar is encountered. Right. That might be a moment where the whole session would need to turn to focus on the scar in order to provide an opportunity to renegotiate it. Right, like building the toolkit, just having more to work with and more to use, and that's the kind of thing that we'll go over in the training. And then also just a more detailed understanding about the nervous system, what it is, how these responses work, because I think there's a lot of confusion about kundalini energy mm -hmm. and um, nervous system response and dural unwinding, and there's a lot that can be felt through the hands, since the Tantra modality often is using the hands, and feeling those responses internally and being able to help somebody um, you know, if there were some coupling of responses in terms of arousal and danger or, um, mm -hmm. you know, just working through some of those things. So we're talking about unpacking trauma here in a way. Yeah. Unpacking trauma to uncouple arousal from danger, for instance, to catch that moment where the person is, is coupling them maybe unconsciously right. and, you know, again, shifting the trajectory of the ses session away from something habitual into something more spontaneous, but that's speaking to what's happening in that moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times people could misconstrue the movement of energy, thinking, oh, well, this is good, it's beneficial, this is a Kriya, and what in fact somebody is doing is re-traumatizing themselves through their experience and being able to know the difference between what one of my teachers uh, describes as counterpulse versus mm -hmm. the free movement of X, you know, to know the difference between a counterpulse re-traumatization or just a reenactment of a traumatic pattern in the body versus actually the genuine liberation of energy, right. that there is a way to know by reading somatic signs and That's signals right. in the body what's actually happening. And that, as we both agree, that there's a lot of work to be done off the table before a session starts so yes. that we know what direction it's happening in those talk skills and those tracking skills mm -hmm. and a way of knowing, oh, okay, I think we're getting closer to like the pulse or the note of something that has some juice there mm -hmm. that needs to be attended to that, you know, I think a lot of practitioners have those instincts and have those intuitions, but they just don't know what to do with them because uh -huh. they don't, that, that form might not address it. And so that's something that we're really going to talk about in the training. Great.